really the bottom line. Um, nobody, the media is not concerned any longer with anything else. They're prepared to cut, to, to touch the button for the lowest common denominator as long as it brings in the audience, raises the TRP and brings in the profit. And that is really a very radical change from the kind of media in mission mode and media as a calling with which most of us that are sitting around here um, grew up and worked with. Uh, a far more ubiquitous and virulent issue in the media is, is hypersexualization. Um, that's a huge commercial draw, but with detrimental consequences to very large numbers. While we have talked about how the media is co-tying to the government, to me, a major mystery is that this government, which from all um, assessments, one would say, would be perturbed on something like this happening, is remarkably not only silent, but hands off. And I have personal experience of the matter, because almost immediately after Mr. Modi took over as prime minister, and um, I found that one had access to the PMO because one of our Saturday group uh, became <coughs> the principal secretary. So I shot up a letter pointing out all the hazards of pornography and appealing desperately that never mind what other um, issues, please do what <coughs> David Cameron at that point was doing with uh, the media in Britain. I want to draw to you a portrait of where the media is going right now and while everybody is jumping because the media has become the most lucrative <coughs> cash cow that there is today in the business sector. Um, what this all pervasive, all powerful, now omnipotent <coughs> media will do when it carries not just these titillating imagery that we see on television, but when it walks this internet through streaming videos and smartphones into our remote rural areas. And I would say that what has happened in the urban areas and what has happened with the Nirbhayas of this uh, country is uh, just a small, small part of what is likely to erupt like a volcano in rural areas that have been protected um, and kept away from such things, do not have, even if we sort of are talking about sophistic sophistications of being able to uh, assess <coughs> pornography and to, to, to be able to use it in, 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 in certain ways. Well, this, uh, something that I have no, 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 no uh, um, sympathy for a point of view, but it, it doesn't even begin to apply when we talk about the rule of ethics. We all de deeply believe in the freedom of expression, but our constitution says, qualify it with clause two, and that is reasonable restraints. And so we find ourselves colonized today by the First Amendment, the US First Amendment, because that is what is prevailing over what our own rules and laws are. And 25 years have gone, with governments have come and gone of all views, and broadcasting bills and convergences bills and you know what have you have all been framed and drafted and debated, but nothing has come. And it is this which has created the laissez faire and the fate accompli that we talk about and the kind of growth that we are now seeing where you have, where, as you say rightly, opaque, uh, you don't know who owns what, and there is, because there have been no rules and regulations framed, there has been vertical integration, there has been cross sectoral, horizontal integration, and so monolithic media empires have been created. Media and entertainment, as the sector is now being called in corporate parlance, is being estimated to be anywhere between 0.5 to 1% of the GDP. And the kind of projections that you see in, in now huge studies that are coming up on the media, which show the projections that the growth is kind of exponential. And so as the media dries, opportunities dry in the West, and our media opportunities open because print with literacy rising, 
print is not being sacrificed to the, the electronic media or the new media that is coming in. Television itself has had a huge run, 900 channels, 400 for news alone, and we talk of lack of diversity. FDI rules and regulations that have been framed, and most recently, and expanded and enlarged enormously, 100% investment able, uh, uh, allowed into DTH, 100% into HITS, uh, which is this headline, uh, headband or head, head in the sky or whatever it is, which bypasses the airwaves to, to, to reach, 100% in non-news um, entertainment channels, and even 49% <coughs> in news. So all this is being done, again, with no question of thinking about regulation <laughs> of content, cultural protection, or anything else amazing from a government that is being critiqued for being just that. Because what we are hearing <coughs> only is that the company's size must be so much, the, the license fee must be so much, and, and there you are, you're in business.